We all know that Fall Guys is a game where you have to get through a series of obstacle courses before you get eliminated by your opponents. But today, I'm going to win a game of Fall Guys without even touching anything that can be considered an obstacle. So basically, anything that's not like the floor or a solid wall. Dizzy Heights is one of the easier minigames to avoid obstacles in, but there's definitely still some things to look out for. For starters, there's these yellow bouncy triangles at the beginning. It doesn't look too hard to avoid these, but what makes it really difficult is the fact that other players can push you into them. That's a pretty common theme in this challenge. I always have to watch out for other players and make sure I'm not in a situation where I can be pushed into an obstacle. Next are these big cannonballs. These have messed me up a lot more than I'd like to admit because they can be hard to predict when you get closer to the end of the section. Also, sometimes I just get impatient and try to make my move when I shouldn't. When I got to the third section, I grabbed the guy ahead of me because I also wanted to get first place. The thing about this first race is that I was actually attempting two other challenges at the same time. One where I can't fall over, and one where I always have to win gold medals. So if I failed one of these conditions, I could just try for the others. That's why getting first place was important to me here. But something happened where it seemed like I fell over for no reason. Even after looking back at the footage, I can't figure out why this happened. So if any of you guys have an idea, then be sure to let me know in the comments. One of the most difficult parts of this course is avoiding the fruit as a platform carry me left and right. Sometimes the fruit traps me before I can make it to that final ramp, and other times I get hit immediately by the fruit before I can react. But luckily, I had no issues here. Unfortunately, I got perfect match the next round. Why is this unfortunate? Not only is it just a boring minigame, the challenge doesn't add any difficulty to it. Like, I'm trying to make content here, and there isn't much for me to talk about. So, I'm just gonna use the power of editing and say... Boom! Time for round 3. Tail Tag has eliminated me in this challenge time and time again because it takes just as much luck as it takes skill. The spinners block me off from using the inside ramps because it's too risky to try and slip past him without making contact. So basically, I had to stick to the outside of the map the entire time. I'm also at a disadvantage because I can't use the spinners to shake people off of me. When I have a tail, I try to fling myself away from people with the spinners, but that's another strategy I can't use here. When the round started, I locked onto this guy for a while until I was in grabbing range. But when I went to grab him, the game didn't process it somehow, and they kept their tail. Luckily, I was able to intercept someone who was trying to run by. Basically, my strategy was to hug the inside without using the ramps until I get to these purple blocks. I can use these to juke people out because they have to approach me from one side or another. This allows me to just wait for someone to come at me from one side, and that gives me enough time to react and run off the other side. I also try to make sure that I'm near other people who have tails, so if someone's looking for a tail, they won't necessarily target me out of the group. Here's one of my favorite tricks to pull in tail tag. I run up this ramp on the outside, then when I reach the yellow platform, I run off and turn around. This usually buys me some time and space to get away from whoever's chasing me. So besides just running around the outside, if I ran into anyone going the opposite direction, I'd have to make it look like I was going one way, then change my direction right before they got to me so I could get around them. I was doing pretty good until this purple guy intercepted me on the way up the ramp. Getting my tail grabbed here was really scary since there were only 10 seconds left on the clock. But fortunately, someone else was coming down one of the inner ramps, so I snatched their tail and booked it to qualify. If you thought this challenge wasn't very difficult so far, I can't really blame you, but round 4 is what really spices things up, because I got Fruit Shoot. It is extremely difficult to clear this minigame without touching a single fruit. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that there are only 6 qualifying spots, and that it can sometimes be impossible to react if a fruit comes at me. When the round started, I decided to wait for the first wave of fruit to pass before making my jump. However, when I did jump, my arm hit the wall on the side, and I fell really far behind. I had to speed up and hug the right side, just barely avoiding several apples that skimmed across there. Then a miracle happened. This apple was headed right for me, but someone happened to be far enough ahead to block the apple and cause it to bounce over me. When I got to the final conveyor belt, I had another really close call where another apple was about to hit me. It's always the apples for some reason, but luckily it bounced off of a watermelon first. I don't know what kind of grudge these apples were holding against me, but I managed to qualify in the very last remaining spot. Fruit Shoot ended a lot of my previous runs, so I'm glad that I was 
finally able to conquer it in the successful attempt. But before the final round, I want to highlight some of the difficulties that I had and what caused a lot of my failed attempts. This challenge becomes extremely difficult for some minigames and not so difficult for others, so some parts of the journey are even more exciting than the destination. There were a few courses that consistently ended my runs, one of which was Hit Parade. The revolving gates in the middle were especially difficult to handle because they depended so much on how other players influenced them. I also couldn't go around the side because my arm would clip through them a little. Another difficult yet possible course to complete was DoorDash. I had to complete the entire course without touching any of the door pieces, including when they fly off after the doors are broken. I actually managed to do it one time though, and it's one of the most difficult things I've ever done in this game. Whirligig gave me some trouble because other people would always knock me into the spinners at the beginning. Slime Climb also has a ton of obstacles, but the most difficult part to avoid was when logs would get shot down one of the ramps instead of regular balls. By the time I got there, the logs would stack on top of each other, so I couldn't clear them without a perfectly timed jump. Block Party was also hard for the same reason as Whirligig, where other people would push me into the blocks. The rest weren't too difficult, but the real problem with this challenge was winning the final round. I had several really good runs on Fall Mountain where I didn't touch any obstacles but just barely lost to someone else. And I even had a run on Jump Showdown where someone decided to grab me out of nowhere. So the round that did it for me was Hexagon, which doesn't involve any obstacles. It's not quite as impressive as winning on Fall Mountain or Jump Showdown where the challenge comes into play, but I still have to stay alive longer than 5 other people. On one hand, going up against less people increases my chances of winning, but the round lasts much longer and requires more mental endurance. Everything went pretty smoothly at the beginning, until this guy with the headband started following me. It took me a while to cut them off, and by the time I did, there wasn't any floor left for me to utilize. So I fell two levels down and was able to spend some time on this yellow part, but even that floor faded quickly and I had to fall another two floors down. But here's when things started really going my way. It was only me and the guy with the headband left on this purple floor, so I thought we were going to have a very long time to stall before we had to confront each other. But apparently, someone else was still on the floor above us and had fallen down to our floor. Eventually, I had the rest of the floor to myself, but I couldn't stay on it for too long. When I fell down to the yellow floor, I had to confront someone and follow them. This was super risky because there weren't any blue tiles below us while this was going on. I just barely made it to an area where I could drop down to the final floor before they could cut me off. I tried to deplete as many tiles as I could before everyone dropped down to the final floor, and it eventually came down to me and the same guy who had just cut me off before. I thought the last person left was the guy on the other side who I saw running before. I was unaware of the guy that was still above me, so I just kept stalling for a while until I could find him. This confused me when I looked over and I'm like, wait, I'm the only one here. And then they dropped down from the floor above me. Not only that, but they came over to my side and it really caught me off guard. So it all came down to how we would use these last remaining tiles. When we both saw what was happening, we just started running around frantically and seemed to jump off at the exact same time, but I just barely clutched out the victory. Thanks for watching. I'll put the unedited footage in the description if any of you want to make triple sure that I didn't touch any obstacles, and I'll show the medals here to prove that this all happened in the same run. I'll catch you in my next video, see ya.